Hello friends, and welcome to The Hanged Man in the Moon. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm pleased to meet you. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. I'm truly honored. Friends, if you are a returning visitor, you already know that this is my Back to Basics mini-series within my deep dive into the Thoth Tarot. The Tarot created by Lady Frida Harris and Aleister Crowley. And just in case you are a new here to this channel, let me tell you why I call it Back to Basics. Now, those of you who know me know that I tend to dive into humongous spreads, large, massive quantities of cards all laid out on a table. But for this Back to Basics series, I've been limiting myself to a smaller number of cards. And I'll show you those cards in just a moment. We've got a beautiful deck that we're using this week, as usual. Um, but before we look at the cards, I'd like us to ramble a little bit together. <coughs> And when I say ramble, um, let's take a journey through the process of this channel itself, yeah? This channel is dedicated to the idea that we can all live our lives more intentionally. That an intentional life is possible. And so every week when I draw my cards and I lay my spread for whatever deck I'm using, the base question for this channel has almost always been, how can we live more intentionally in the coming week or in the coming time period? Now, what does that mean? Yeah, an intentional life is a life in which we recognize that we have access to the power of intention. And that power can be imagined like a river. Yeah, a river that moves us constantly in the direction of our evolution. And while we can never be cut off from that river, we can sometimes limit our access to that power. And this is where I have learned quite a bit from those who teach the power of um, the law of attraction. Now, many of those who, who explain, who work with, who um, help us understand what the power of attraction is, what the law of attraction is, give a lot of attention to emotion. Why? Well, emotion doesn't itself create, but emotion is our indicator. Our emotion is our indicator of how open we are to receiving or how closed off we are, how resistant we are to receiving that which we are trying, which we are attracting. Whether we're trying to attract it or not, we are always attracting. Whether there are things that we want and, or things that we don't want, we are always attracting the next experience into our lives. Now, what does that have to do with the power of intention? Yeah, the, our emotions, whether we are, some people call them high, some people call them open, whether we're in the direction more of love and joy and well-being and um, pure awareness, I, I count that as an emotion, clarity. Uh, or we're in the direction of powerlessness and despair and um, unworthiness and, uh, yeah, powerlessness. If we can think of our emotions as a spectrum like that, we can place ourselves somewhere within that spectrum. And the closer we are towards the side of love and uh, joy and uh, gr gratitude, the more we are open to receiving. The more we are in the direction of unworthy, feeling unworthy, feeling uh, depressed, feeling powerless, the less open, the more resistant we are to receiving. The same thing works for the power of intention. The more open we are, the more access we have to living our lives intentionally. The better the things we are trying to do will work out for us. The more fluidly, the more easily, the more smoothly we will 
evolve into the beings who have the experiences that we want to have. And the closer we are in the direction of unworthiness and despair and um, powerlessness, we know that we are cutting our, not cutting ourselves off, but we, we're closing ourselves off to the full access to the power of intention. We can never completely close ourselves off. But we can, as some people say, pinch ourselves off pretty well. Yeah? We like pinching the um, hose, uh, the, the hose. If you have ever watered a garden or watered grass or used a hose for any purpose, you know that you can pinch it off, you can twist it off, and water will just dribble out, or you can let it release and it will pour forth. Now, the water in the, um, the metaphor as power of intention, we can never pinch it off. But we can pinch ourselves off. Yeah, We can close ourselves off. And if you can imagine another metaphor, if you can imagine yourself either open like a leaf on a river or crimped up and closed up like a rock in a river. Which one is going to be able to move more smoothly and more easily and quick, more quickly? Which one is going to move much more slowly? Which one is going to sink and in that resistant state have less access to the powerful movement of the flow of the water. The rock, of course, the closed off one is going to sink and not become immobile, but become much less mobile. Now the speed is going to be greatly reduced. The weight drags us down. And we can feel that, right? We can feel those less happy emotions as feelings of being weighted down, right? When we feel depressed, do we feel light and buoyant or do we feel heavy and incapable of moving? You get the idea, right? So emotion is an indicator. It isn't the power itself, but it is the indicator of how well we are able to make use of the power that is around us. And this week's tarot and oracle reading is pointed in that direction. Strongly, I believe. Now, last week, we realized that we had the power of the magician, if you recall. If you don't recall, go take a look at that video. It was a pretty good one, I think, if I do say so myself. Now, the magician does what? The magician creates, creates opportunities, creates new possibilities, and adds power to existing ones, yes, but also creates new things. This week and that week, I'm sorry, and that week's reading, last week's reading, um, we had the power of the magician and we recognized that we had the challenge of our minds. This week we have the first seed, perhaps, of what the magician is creating. And we'll also notice that we have, another, again, a challenge of mind. So friends, are you all set? Are you all ready? Are you buckled in? Are you strapped in and ready for the ride? Well, what are we going to do? First, I will show you the whole spread. And I'll talk about the spread in general, very briefly. And then we'll break, break it into its two major parts and read the spread together. Well, here we go. If you saw last week's video, you know that I'm using the same set of cards this week as I did last week because 
I love these decks. These, why do I say these decks? Well, actually, that does make sense. There are two decks here. Um, but I love these decks. What I was thinking of were the two decks that I have by the same creator, M.M. Maline. And I've used her decks for the last month now. Um, one of them is the Rosetta Tarot. The, I have the Papyrus Edition. I'm not sure that there is another edition. I have the Papyrus Edition. Um, and then there's this deck, which is the um, Tabula Mundi. And this is, it's a fabulous redrawing of the, uh, the, what do we call it? <laughs> the Harris Crowley deck. Um, it's different. It's very different in many ways. Uh, the, not only the style, but the way it's drawn is very different, and yet it's in keeping with the, with the tone of the deck. It's also in keeping with the meaning of the cards. I think it's a very powerful Thoth-based deck. And I highly recommend it. And I highly recommend the book that comes with it, um, Liebermundi. Yeah, Book M Liebermundi is the guidebook for it. And the deck is called Tabula Mundi. I've gotten, I've finally gotten those re, um, I've gotten them straightened out in my head again. Last week, I got myself confused. Uh, and if you want either of those decks, either of those items, the link to the shop will be in the description box below. And beneath those three cards, we had two cards from an Oracle deck, which I've been using a lot. And there's a link to that uh, Amazon site in the description box below as well. It's the Oracle of the Radiant Sun. It's an astrology based deck and it's just fabulous. So we have those two decks. The three cards at the top, they are a three card positional spread. Just in case you're new to this channel, let me just briefly tell you what that means. A positional spread is a spread that gives us positions. Each card responds to either a question or a prompt. So for this three card spread, ask, answering the question, how can we live our lives more intentionally in the coming week? The first card is the significance, the significant answer to that question. The second card is the challenge and the challenge can be positive something that we are striving for, something we're reaching towards, or it can be negative, a challenge as an obstacle, something to overcome. And the third card is advice. So significance, challenge, advice. The two cards at the bottom, they are going to give us either advice, another layer of advice, or they're going to be a recapitulation of the three card spread above. So that's how we're going to be reading the cards. And we're all ready to go after those three cards on top, the cards from the Tabula Mundi, de Mundi deck. So let me show you those again. Here they are. So you probably already noticed that we have a very interesting three card spread here. Why is it very interesting? Yo, you're already telling me. Thank you. Yes, it's very interesting because we had two aces in a row, right? From left to right, we had the ace of discs and then the ace of cups and then the nine of swords. Um, nine of swords seems to be following me a lot these days. I'm not sure that's a good thing, uh, but it, it, it's, a, it's never a bad thing. What I mean is it's pointing towards something that I should give attention to, right? Um, but here we go. Left to right, ace, two aces and then the nines. Um, and the two elements for the aces are both the receptive elements, right? There's no uh, elemental ill dignity here between these two cards. Yeah, they are neither um, well dignified or ill dignified. They are neutral. I lie. They are well dignified. Bad reader, bad reader. They're well dignified. Yeah. Earth and water, they give energy to each other. Air and fire give energy to each other. Yeah. Air and earth are ill dignified. They, they're in contrast. They struggle against each other. They fight with each other, just as water and fire fight with each other. Now, water and air are neutral. They're compatible. They don't build each other up, nor do they tear each other down. They 
walk together well, just as fire and earth walk together well. Neither well-dignified or ill-dignified, just neutral buds, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, these two actually build each other up, the fire and the water. I'm sorry, not the fire, the earth and the water. Um, and we start with this beautiful ace of discs, which is very different from the uh, card drawn by Lady Frida Harris, right? Her card looks very much like a seed. I mean, like a literal seed from a plant with wings around it. It reminds me a little bit of, um, oh, what is the name of that tree? There's a seed that has, that's, has like part of a wing attached to it. It's from a tree, and I want to say it's from a eucalyptus tree of some sort, but I'm, I know I'm wrong. But it's one where this, when the seed drops, it turns into like a little whirly bird, and it'll move it farther away from the tree. It's a beautiful, um, beautiful seed, and maybe I'll put, a, if I can remember to, I'll put a picture right here. Now, if you saw a picture, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't see a picture, I messed up and I forgot. <laughs> so, but that's, her card reminds me of that. Lady Frida Harris's um, Ace of Discs card reminds me of that seed, even though it's very different. This one does not remind me of that seed, but it's a beautiful card. We do have a kind of geometric seed in the background, right? We have an Egyptian goddess down there at the bottom. We've got a lot of symbology here. A lot of, there are a lot of symbols here. We've got um, glyphs around, I should say glyphs. They are Hebrew letters around the top of the disc. We've got numbers inside of a fan at the top. It's, it's a meaning rich card. And it's the ace of discs and it's the root of the powers of earth. What does that mean? Well, in the Crowley deck, the aces have all of the, the assumption is that the aces have all of the um, zodiacal elements and planets all associated in the first card. And then that from the ace, everything else um, blossoms forth. So the ace contains it all and it blossoms forth. There are other ways of construct or understanding the ace through 10 in other tarot decks. Yeah, for example, in a continental tarot, in the Tarot of the Holy Light, the ace actually is the first. It's the, for example, the ace of wands, I believe, would be um, the first decanate of Aries, which is the beginning of the fire signs, right? and the first decanate of the beginning of the fire signs, which makes sense to me. And then the 10 is the culmination of bringing it all together. Here, the ace is the one that has it all together and which will burst forth. So it's a different way of conceiving aces and tens, but they're both equally valid, I believe. Um, here again, we have the root of the powers of earth. Um, what does that mean for Crowley? It's the matter at hand. It's accepting that things might look fixed, but actually it's a whirling sphere. And <clears throat> in this card, we get that idea of the whirling sphere much more clearly, I think, than we did with uh, Lady Frida Harris's drawing. Although her drawing, again, reminds me of the seed, which does whirl. We don't see the whirling, whereas here we, we do kind of see that whirling. You see the, that, those two spirals there in the seed in the background give a sense of whirling, don't they? So there's no stability or result, but the seed of a creation. It's the beginnings of things. The result, the culmination is in the future. I was about to say far into the future, but we don't know that. It all depends, I would think, on how open we are to flowing with our intention. If we're still in the beginning stages, if we're in the beginning stages, still in the, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, we're body language showing how pinched off I am, right? 
if we're at the early stages of, yes, this, we may develop much more quickly than we anticipate. But still, it's something that is moving in the direction of the future. So there's no stability, no result as of yet. And there may be no result. Because we are also called to nurture and tend to this seed of creation. So this may be the earliest of days or something that will never happen without change or disruption or, or, or some movement, this seed might never germinate, might never take root. So in, interestingly, Crowley suggests that in material situations, for example, if this is around the topic of um, money or part of our job or our, our livelihood or our homes or any of the material stuff around us, he suggests that in material situations we focus on the highest spiritual level. And equally, if we are looking at more spiritual, like divine love, or how do I grow and evolve as a person, or what is my path, or what is my... What is, I don't believe in our pur purpose as in I, we were given a purpose or we came here to, with a purpose in mind beyond living joyous, happy lives. Everything else is our choice, I believe. But so how do I live a more jo happy, joyous life? If we're focused on more spiritual subjects in the reading, then we would want to consider the material around us. So, how do I do this? Well, let's look at the stuff around us as a reflection, as this, as above, so below. How are things working around, out around us in the material plane, with our jobs, with our homes, right? That, those are good indicators. So our question here is how do we live more intentionally, which seems like a fairly um, spiritual question. So let's look around at us and at the stuff around us. How are things landing for us in the physical realm? That's a good indicator. Now the creator of this deck in particular says that this is the birth of an action, which is a little bit different. An action in the material realm. Now wealth and incarnation connected to spirit. That's not different from Crowley, right? Crowley's, we just talked about that, yeah? The physical realm and the spiritual realm are connected in this card. So if we're looking about looking at spiritual questions, we consider the material um, mirrored state, right? So here, connected material incarnation connected with spirit is indicated with her um, understanding as well. She also says, be silent, take action with discernment. So she focuses this ace more on the action uh, level of the card and we want to do so quietly. We want to do so with discernment and um, we want to recognize the birth of the action. Because action also creates in the world which is a misunderstanding that many people have who criticize the Law of Attraction. Those who truly teach the Law of Attraction correctly have never said, do not act in the world. Have never said that action is neither important nor unnecessary. Because we all, if we did not think that acting in this physical world was important, we wouldn't be here in these beautiful bodies that we're co-creating, having this human experience. We came into these bodies not to sit and wait for stuff to come for us, come to, come for us, come to us. We came into these bodies to, to move and act and experience and enjoy and um, sense and relish who, where, when we are, right? Which is all 
action and spurring towards action. So this card recognizes all of that. Birth of action. Recognizing we're just at the beginning. The spirit and the material realm are both connected and reflective of each other. So if we're thinking about how are we going to live our lives more intentionally, we take a look at how our lives are manifesting here in the world. And we recognize that even though there's no stability, there's no result yet, this seed of creation exists and has the potential to wither and fade or grow and flourish. And we have the potential we have the right, we have the joy, we have the anticipatory excitement of nurturing this seed. That's the first answer to our question. How are we going to live our lives more intentionally? We're going to recognize the seeds and recognize what they mean and act and let that inform our actions quietly, not talking about it a lot. And also allowing the seed to birth action, action from us in, as, in an as unresistant state as possible. Unresistant, is that correct? You're in, un, in resist, unresistant, unresistant. Yes, that's non-resistant, hopsy that. Let's do non-resistant. Sorry, little Korean slipped out. Let's do non-resistant. So, in as non-resistant a, resistant a state as possible, we want to act. English is not my friend right now. So, here we go. Ace of discs. What is the challenge? Another ace, right? This is the Ace of Cups. This is the root of the powers of water. And again, water and earth are well dignified, so that's a good thing. So this will indicate to me that this is a challenge of the positive nature, rather than a challenge of the negative nature. Not an obstacle, rather, but uh, something to move towards, to reach for. Something to challenge ourselves to. So, how are we going to move with this ace, the previous ace of discs, in the direction of the ace of cups? Cups, what are cups? They are our emotions. They are love. They are also our intuition. They are our watery artistic natures as well. They are our depth of spirituality, as opposed to the height of spirituality, which is more wanzy to me, more fiery. So Ace of Cups is fertility, productiveness, beauty, pleasure, and happiness. These are the things we want to reach for. And a very natural flow from that Ace we were just talking about, right? That seed of potential, of, uh, <clears throat> sorry, of uh, new action, of uh, new creation. We, how do we do that? We do that by feeling our fertility, by knowing our, by understanding our productiveness, by relishing in the beauty that we are and that we are experiencing, by taking pleasure in who we are and where we are and when we are, by experiencing happiness. And this card is also asking us to pass it on. Yeah, pass on the love that we have. The cups are love cards, right? Right. So we pass on the love that we have. There's a boundless possibility of creation. And so each pleasure that arises, that, that we can relish, we want to, and not in, <clears throat> not in a manipulative way, but we want to make use of that. We want to take advantage of that because that is an indication that we are open to the power of, it, of intention and so we can flow with that. So use each pleasure while it's still available as an indication and as a, a tool to 
How? How as a, how as a tool? <clears throat> Emotions attract as well. Yeah? Emotions will attract their like and depending on the direction that we are moving, whether we're moving in the direction of love or we're moving in the direction of powerlessness, will attract a little bit of the next level of that direction of emotional movement. So what does that mean? So for example, I have moved from anger and irritation into satisfaction. So I'm moving in the direction of love, right? And if I take advantage of that new sense of satisfaction with who I am and where I am, I will attract more satisfying things. I will attract more satisfaction. And if I can maintain my attention on my satisfaction, I will also attract a little bit of maybe the next level of emotional development or emotional evolution in the direction that I was moving, which is towards love. So from satisfaction, I might start feel, attracting hope or I might start attracting pleasure or I might start attracting interest and excitement, right? So that's how we can use pleasure as also a tool while it's available. So we can experience the freshness of the Ace of Cups and use that freshness as a way of drawing more freshness towards us. And the creator of this card also points to receptiveness that becomes things of form. So it's a kind of law of attraction thing, right? We become receptive and we receive that which we have chosen for ourselves, that which we place our attention on. And we receive that and it becomes form. We don't receive the... Now, you'll notice I, did, we, I didn't say... And then Meline didn't say, we receive the form. We receive that which will become form. That we re receptiveness that becomes things of form. Not receptiveness of form, right? That's a big difference. And recognizes the evolutionary flow of the energy of the universe into, into matter, into incarnation. And now the creator of this card also senses the idea of stirrings of love, beauty. Could also be conception in the literal sense of women becoming pregnant, but also conception in other ways, right? Conceptions of ideas, of, of hopes, conceptions of dreams. And the cups, the water suit is also a suit of dreams as well, right? And devotion. Emotional Connection, emotional linking. I, don't, I was about to say bondage or bonding, but that, that carries a, little, a lot of shadow with it. Emotional linking and emotional connection, right? So we've got all of that here. That is our challenge. That's the direction we want to move in. We want to, be, to use the pleasure that has that is potential in this um, time as the tool to open ourselves to receive that which will become form. And that is the whole, well, that is not the whole point. That is one strong point of the card that preceded it, right? Is things becoming form, things form blossoming and flourishing. So what is the advice? Now, this is a weird-ass card for advice, right? The Nine of Swords, which is cruelty. And <clears throat> cruelty. Be cruel. I don't think that's what it's saying. Now, this card is associated with um, Mars in Gemini. For me, Mars is not naturally placed in Gemini, but many of us do have the planet Mars in the the house of Gemini, right? So it's a possibility. 
Um, you'll notice here we have the winged lion from the lion card, from the love, from the lion card, from the lover card, right? We uh, have a knife, a sword, I should say, piercing the head of this poor, now probably dead boar. We have nigh swords piercing the eggs, right? They're not, they're not eggs, they're, uh, they're rocks in this card. Very interesting. A lot of cracking, a lot of piercing and cracking, right? Material form is being pierced. It hasn't cracked open yet, but is, has the potential to crack open. So, when people have Mars in Gemini, there are some benefits to that. Now, another side to the cruelty aspect, there's the side of innovation. Now, people with Mars in Gemini are innovative. They're lively. They are creative. They are good at commu and good and com co courageous. They're good and courageous at communicating. Yeah. They have the cojones to say what they want to say, and they say it well. Yeah, they're not timid. They're not shy about communicating with, it, with other people, which is wonderful. But there can be some drawbacks to that, right? Yeah, there could be over-communication or um, aggressive communication possible as well. So when things are evenly tempered, it's wonderful. Innovation, creativity, um, good Courageous communication, all wonderful. But this card for Crowley is cruelty. And it can be cruelty from somewhere or someone else. That's certainly possible. But I tend to move in the direction of the potential to be cruel to ourselves. Self-criticism. Yeah? Stabbing our own selves in our own backs with our own mental swords. Yeah, self-inflicted cruelty. And often those people who come at us in uh, cruel verbal ways are matching our own internal environment. Yeah? So, cruelty. Cruelty to, uh, as, a, as an act of self-harm. Uh, torturing ourselves with doubt and denial and other tricks of an exhausted mind, yeah? Illusions and uh, fears and um, what, uh, um, not apocalypse, um, creating ends of worlds that aren't ending, right? <clears throat> There's a word for that, and it's escaping me now. But when we, we do all of that self-harm of mind. But we do have some suggestions here. Some suggestions. One suggestion is to consult other cards, to find out how we can release ourselves from this downward spiral. So the other cards are those aces, right? So recognizing the new the fresh, the small, the seed of potential that is around us always can be one way passed through over, under, or around the pain and the self-destructiveness of this card. We're resisting a needed change of, of mind or perspective here when we're being that cruel to ourselves. That's part, it's a, an act of resistance, right? So we are cruel and despairing. We're experiencing anguish of the mind and we want to overcome it with mental discipline as well. So we want to find a way to change our minds to find a new way of perceiving, a new way of um, conceiving, a new way of communicating with self. And that'll take some discipline because we, especially if we have um, developed a habit of self-sabotage inside of our own heads, that, that 
habit, that cycle of worry and doubt and denial of self and denial of, of our power and denial of our talents and our denial of selfhood. If we have any of those habits, they're hard to, they can, they can, they are not, they can be challenging to break because we attract more of those same thoughts. And so we want to find a way to discipline our minds. And how can we do that? I always recommend meditation, but there are, and there are, and there are many kinds of meditation. If you say, well, I tried meditation and it doesn't work for me, then you have, just haven't found the meditation that's right for you. And if you want to know more about that, let me know in the comments below. We can chat, we can talk, we can help you find something that works for you, that is good for you and comfortable for you. But meditation, I think is always the first step in mental um, discipline. Also finding good habits like journaling on a daily basis if you have the time and you have the space, um, doing regular artistic um, expression in some way, a way that suits you in a, on a regular basis, not waiting until you feel like it, but doing it on a regular basis, disciplining, disciplining the mind in whatever way it expresses itself best. If it's creatively, if it's in writing, if it's in silence, if it's in prayer, whatever, find your discipline that is best for you. And that'll help us get through this, right? That makes sense, doesn't it? I think it does. So the advice, what is the, the advice is, changing the mind, finding the discipline that will get us through whatever we're doing to ourselves to present us, to prevent us, to prevent ourselves from moving in the direction of that ace of discs and it, next step, ace of cups, right? Because these two are beautiful, wonderful possibilities and potentials for us right now. We can do this. Do you believe it? Do you believe yourself? Do you believe us? We can do this. You can do this. We're all saying this to you. You can do this. Truly. Whether you feel it or not, you can. Question is, are you ready to do the thing that will help you know your own power now? Are you willing? Are you able? Are you willing to be willing? Are you willing to be willing to be willing? Something I got from Colette Baron Reed. Yeah? Are you ready to be ready to be ready? If you're not ready yet, maybe you're ready to get ready. If you're not there yet, maybe you're ready to get ready to get ready. But just acknowledge, if you can just acknowledge that I can turn in that direction, if you're not there, that will help you so much. That will help all the people around you so much. That'll help the world so much, you have an effect on the world. Because you are divine, eternal nature, here having this experience in life. Always ripe with potential, ripe with seeds that are waiting to be nourished and nurtured. There are aces of discs all around you every moment of every day. That's how we can live our lives more intentionally, by nourishing them, nurturing them, and doing that, doing the, playing the work, playing the work of, I don't, doing the work, playing the work, enjoying the work of Nurturing the seed of the ace of discs, of moving in the direction of receptiveness of things to become material form, of sharing love. And all of those things we just talked about. So friends, we've got two cards here for either advice or recapitulation. Let me show you those cards from the Oracle deck right now. Friends, if you recall, Last week, we had two cards with the same number. That's because we had two cards from different planets in the same zodiacal sign of Aquarius. This time again, we have two cards with the same number. 
because we have two cards from with different planets in the sign of Leo. Interesting, a fire sign, right? Um, and we had no fire up in the uh, three cards above, but we did have Mars, right? So the first card here, egoism, yeah, is Mars in Leo. And we had Mars up above in Gemini, giving us the, um, the potential dangers of Mars being in Gemini. Here, Mars being in Leo is actually a natural fit. And why is that? Well, because Mars is domiciled in two zodiacal signs in traditional classical astrology. One of them being uh, Aries, the other being Scorpio. But because this is Leo, we're going to look at Mars being in Aries, which would mean that this card, Mars in Leo, points to the third decanate of Leo. Yeah, Mar so that would give us the cardinal aspect of fixed fire's vital attributes entering our reading here. The cardinal aspect of fixed fire. And because it's the third decanate, we have an exaltation. The exaltation is the sun in Aries. Now, because the planet for uh, Leo is the sun, <clears throat> the exaltation of the sun is in Aries. So that's really interesting, right? We have Mars in Leo. So Mars, Aries, is, Aries planet is in the sign of Leo, and Leo's planet is exalted in the sign of Aries. Interesting, cool communication there, right? And on the picture of this card, we have a creature here, right? The body of a rooster, which is actually a, a cockerel, which is a young rooster, and the head of a male, a man, a proud man. And at the top, we have the Leo sun, exalted in Aries, yeah? And we have a royal scarab to show eminent position which is something Leo's kind of like, yeah, being proud beings that they are. I am Leo's son, just so you know. And what is this card indicating? It indicates using energy in expansive and showy ways, big scale, yeah, especially if there is an audience, because, you know, Leo's love an audience. So instead of doing something big in the quiet of the night and when nobody else will notice, this card is actually pointing towards doing something that will get attention. Taking charge, maybe. Uh, implementing and making use of our competitive natures in a positive way, if we possibly can. And there's a strong need for appreciation and admiration right now for us. And we want to be cool with that, yeah? We may need to be less bullying and earn the respect of people. Now, we don't want to... This is not the time to make people recognize us or to make people admire us or to make people respect us by show of force or power or whatever. We want to draw that from people by being the beautiful, amazing creatures that we are and by doing the amazing, beautiful things that we can do in the world, whatever that is for you. Whether that is making a beautiful, amazing meal, whether that's doing some art, whether that's speaking as expansively, um, whatever your gig is, do it big and do it showy and do it so people can see, yeah? Be your Mars in Leo self and your sun exalted in Aries, which is ready to go out and do the new thing. That's what this card is pointing towards. And we have this card paired with another Leonine attribute. This is the Saturn in Leo. And Saturn for me doesn't naturally belong in Leo, but here we are, Saturn in Leo. Many of us, there are some, well, there are some of us who have Saturn in Leo, I think, alive. Maybe. <clears throat> but Saturn in Leo gives us what? Well, first let's look at the image. Above we have a prophet, the big old prophet shining in the sky. Below we have 
a speaker, enthusiastically relating the words of that prophet above to a, a, an entranced crowd before him or them. Yeah? You see that below here? Which one is the speaker? Well, this the one facing the crowd on their knees with the arms raised, that's the speaker saying the words of this wonderful, radiant prophet above. And these are the people, wow, amazed and, and uh, listening, raptly. Wow, look at what they're saying. Look at that. How impressive. How important. And that, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to make fun, really. That's the direction we may, we may want to be moving towards. We want to use our tenacity and our self-discipline, very Saturnian qualities, in showy generosity for recognition and for better position. So we want to improve our natures. We want to, not our natures, we want to improve our circumstances. We want to improve the way we are seen by those around us use our discipline and our tenacity to be generous. Our generosity is going to help us both in the eyes of others and with our own position. And we don't often think of that in a capitalistic world, right? We think of if I'm generous, if I give stuff away, there's less for me and so I am now less powerful. Not this case for this card. We want our ambition backed by artistic potential. Now, we want our ambition to be, to be nourished and nurtured by our creativity, is what I think that's pointing towards. And we have a desire for respect and admiration, and that might make us overbearing or approval-seeking, so we want to be careful of that. Yeah? We don't want to lord it over other people. We don't want to beg for attention. Here, I'll give you this. Love me. That's not what we're saying, right? Yeah. I generously give all knowing that you will appreciate me. That's the position. And not, I generously give it all so you will love me. That's not the thing either, right? I generously give it all and I know that you will love me and adore me. And we don't have to give it all, but all of this that I'm giving. And what? We have creative joy to share with, with no attached strings. And we want to do that. We can, we, when we share, when we are generous, we're not necessarily giving away cash money, right? We can give away our time and our attention. We can give away the products of our labor. We can give away our emotional support. We can give away our joy. Remember in the Ace of Cups card, we were asked to share our love, right? We can be generous with our joy as well. Creatively, our creative joy with no strings attached knowing that we will get that desired attention and desired admiration because of who we are and what we are doing. We may need to deal with our disappointment in love or creative matters, but we can get help from, from others with that. Yeah? We do have some potential of disappointment. But it's not only disappointment, right? So instead of letting that what my, those moments of disappointment where I give you my love and there's nothing happened and so am I going to sink into the pit of despair or am I going to find a way to, to move past and around that and am I going to ask for help? I, I'm perfectly able and willing to ask for help. Right? So that's what this, this, this card is pointing towards and both of these cards are pointing towards our desire for attention, right? Our desire for recognition, our desire for um, improved um, status in one way or another, in one sphere or another. And how do we do that? Well, we use our energy in expansive ways and we are generous in uh, disciplined and tenacious ways. We don't allow 
the minor momentary disappointments to drag us down. We look for help when we need it, but we share whatever it is that we have available to share it, especially our love, our joy, um, our creativity. And we want to be sure that we don't lord it over, over others. We don't become bullies. We don't try to force anything. We don't become overbearing as we attract attention, as we attract appraisal, praise and approval. Because that will help feed us and hopefully, perhaps, help move us past that problematic nine of swords without needing the attention to be better, right? We use that attention to as a tool to move through this process knowing that we need to make the first step we need to we don't need to we have the opportunity to take the first step by being generous by being um, expansive by showing off a little bit by sharing that makes sense doesn't it not waiting for somebody to recognize us and make us look, feel appreciated and approved of so that, okay, now I'm ready to take the first step. We need to, we, are, we have the opportunity and we want to enjoy knowing that we take the first step and the universe will respond. Not 100% of the time, because, you know, they all have the... the they all have the free will to do themselves, right? But we know that the universe will respond. And so we can nurture those aces, the ace of discs, and move in the direction of the ace of cups. Does that make sense? If it does, let me know in the comments below. If it doesn't, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I truly appreciate all of the interaction because it not only helps me, it helps bring the channel in front of the eyes of others who might enjoy the channel as well. So you're helping other people as well. You help other people when you hit the thumbs up button and you also subscribe to the channel. You help other people. And so I'm truly appreciative, appreciative of all of those things. And if you want a private reading from me, my email address is below. You can shoot me an email or you can ask in the comments below I want a reading, we can get that for you. Yes? So friends, here we are at the end. Thank you very much for walking this spread with me. And now, as always, I wish you love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness. Thank you.